Inflammatory response and tissue repair. Key points. No modality can accelerate the healing of an injury. By treating an injury with thermal, electrical, or mechanical energy, we're attempting to provide the best environment for healing, but we're not going to accelerate that healing. We do not speed the healing of an injury, but rather prevent the healing process from being hindered by regulating the environment and the function of the cells. Stress is a force that disrupts the normal homeostasis of a system. Stress is any type of physical, chemical, or emotional force placed on the body and its cells. If stress is applied at a sufficient magnitude, the body will undergo physiological changes at the cellular and systemic level. Cellular stress. There are three reactions to stress. It will adapt to the stress. The cell becomes injured but recovers or it dies. So in this, in this instance, is all stress negative? Not always because obviously you can adapt to it or you can recover from the in injury itself. Negative versus positive stress. Negative stress can be acute injury, chronic inflammatory conditions like microtrauma, and overtraining and exhaustion along with burnout. Positive stress can be weightlifting and conditioning. So in this instance, it's the said principle. Building muscle or hypertrophy is going to be the overload principle. Said principle. It's an acronym for specific adaptation to impose demands. This is when an injured structure is subjected to stress and overloads of varying intensities it will gradually adapt over time to the demands placed upon it. Significance for us. So during rehab, the stresses of exercise might, must not be too great to exacerbate the injured site before it has a chance to adapt to the increased demands. So the said principle can be positive or negative. Either you are stressing the area and the body adapts to it bec by becoming stronger or the stress is too great to overcome and in this instance it could be a sprain, strain, or break. You always want to watch for the cardinal signs of inflammation when you're doing rehab which we will discuss later. Overload principle. From muscle to improve strength, it must be forced to work at a higher level than it is accustomed to. In rehab, progressive overload is limited to the healing process. The rate of progression is best determined by the response to the specific exercise. So you're going to watch for the cardinal signs of inflammation. General Adaptation Syndrome. Stage one is the alarm stage. So this is fight or flight. This is the body's initial reaction to the change in homeostasis. The body is going to ready its defense systems and increased blood supplies are routed to those areas needing the most resources. Effects at this stage are increased heart rate, cardiac stroke volume, and the force of myocardial contractions. The blood supply to the non-essential areas is decreased by vasoconstriction of the superficial and abdominal arteries. Proteins are broken down into amino acids to provide energy if an injury occurs. Stage 2 is the resistance stage and this is the body continues to adapt to the stressor by using its homeostatic resources to maintain integrity. This is the longest phase that can last for years. At this point, the individual achieves physiological resistance. In athletes, it's referred to physical fitness. Stage 3 is exhaustion stage. The body can no longer withstand the applied stresses. One of the body's systems cannot tolerate the stress and fails or breaks down. So in this case, examples are going to be traumatic injuries, overuse injuries, and cardiac failure. This would be considered negative stress. There are three phases of the healing process. Inflammatory response phase, that's going to be your acute phase that lasts for around two to five days. 
proliferation phase is three days to three weeks and maturation remodeling phase can be three weeks all the way up to a year and these can overlap. This is a diagram of the healing process. Tissue repair. These are the summary of events. So you have phase one, phase two, and phase three. Phase one, definition is musculoskeletal inflammation. So there is a localized reaction of vascularized, vascularized tissue in response to injury. This is an attempt to control the effects of the injurious agent and return tissue to its normal state. So you're trying to contain the area. Occurs in vascularized tissue in response to injury. Avascular or poorly vascularized tissue will not heal. So the examples of this are the inner margin of the menisci. So there is no blood flow to that area. This phase starts, it serves as a warning sign and it mobilizes the body's defense system. So it gets it ready to do its job and to heal the area. Prepares the area for healing. It restricts the, t the damaged tissue to one area. It destroys any agents causing injury to the area and removes damaged, damaged tissue. The inflammatory response is nonspecific to cause tissue type or location. The same events occur under the influence of the same chemical mediator. So any injury is going to produce this inflammatory response. 